All right, so our second method for solving quadratic equations, factorising the first one, the second one is completing the square. Just to get our heads into it first, I want you to think about, I guess, a, like a, a, a graphical, a, a geometric representation of what x plus 3 all squared actually means. It's a square. It's a squared uh, uh, expression. And so we can actually express it as the two sides of a square. x plus 3 on one side, x plus 3 on the other side. So square has the same sides on both. And if then we do the area of each part of this shape, first of all, what's the area of this part of the shape, Isaac? X squared. What's the area of this part of the shape, Gallon? 3x. Daniela? 3x. And Michaela? Uh, no. No? Okay. So the area of this whole shape is x squared plus 3x plus 3x. We put those together, plus 6x plus 9. And we should recognise that is the same as the direct expansion of x plus 3 all squared. Okay? And so an expression like this, a binomial expression, x and 3, two terms, squared, can be represented on a square shape like this. And we can use that to, I guess, to picture the way that we expand that. Okay? So the entire area of this square, for example, would be x squared plus 6x plus 9. The, ex the uh, expansion of this is x squared plus 6x plus 9. And so we can use that to work backwards to think about well, what would a square, a perfect square, be like if we got it from an expression like this, which at first is not like that. So at first glance, that is not a perfect square, and, uh, but we can manipulate it to get it to be something like a perfect square. So this is how we do it. We take, first of all, any term that is not an x squared or an x term, and we put it on the other side. So you may, you may start with it like that, but in this case, we don't. So I want to move the plus 3 to that side. What am I going to write on that side, Jared? Minus 3, yes. I've got rid of this plus 3. And so I'm taking my through from both sides. And so then I say, all right, what can I write? In fact, I'm going to just rewrite that with some space in there. This is what I'm going to do. What can I write in that space that would make the expression a perfect square? Let's go back to this one first of all. What do we notice about this number here and this number here? Okay? This one here is twice that number. Okay? So when we expand from a perfect square, we end up doubling that number as the coefficient of the x. Okay? And so we're working backwards, and so we've got a minus x, to work backwards, we're going to find half what the number is. So half of that number is minus 3. And so we're going to end up with something that's going to be x minus 3, all squared. Okay? But to be able to get that, what else did we need here? We needed half of this number, and then what did we do? We squared it, okay, to square it to get nine. So we took half of this number and squared it. We took the number that was half of this, I should say, squared it to get this term out here. And so we're going to need to do the same again to make a perfect square. We're going to get this number here and square it and put it in here to form an expression that can factorise to a perfect square. So minus three squared is, Aaron? Not minus nine. No. Positive nine. That's right. Positive nine. Okay? Now, what have I done though? I've actually put something extra into this expression. If I want to keep it an equal equation, what do I need to do? If I put a plus nine on this side, what do I need to do to make this side equal to the same thing? Put a plus nine on this side too. Okay? Just like a set of scales, if I do one thing on one side, I've got to do the same on the other side. Okay? And so, I've now got an expression that can factorise to this, x minus 3, all squared. I've, just to kind of take a step back and make sure we know where we've gone, we've started with an expression, we've manipulated it in such a way to be able to factorise it to a perfect square. Now, what have we ended up on this side, though? Minus 3 plus 9, Ezra? Uh, 6. Okay. So now I've got an expression, x minus 3, all squared, equals 6. Just so you know, the first couple of questions we're going to do today will be 
starting with the ex equation looking like this. Okay, so you'll actually start from this point, the first few questions. But the question three and four, we start with ones like this, and we're going to get to here and then go. Okay, but what do we do from this point here? So I now want to solve this. I want to get the x by itself to solve it. I take the square root of both sides. But remember, when we take the square root of both sides, we've got to account for both the positive and the negative. We only need to put that on one side, but that still accounts for it. Square root of a squared thing just cancels it out. It looks minus 3. And plus or minus root 6 can't do anything to that. That's what it is. We're not quite there yet, though, so we've got x minus 3. How do I get rid of the minus 3 on this side? Jacob? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, adding 3 to both sides, get 3 on this side, add 3 to this side. And they're my answers. There are two answers that solves this equation. X equals 3 plus root X. So somewhere in a 4 point, sorry, 5 point something. 5.1, 5 5.2, 5 something like that. Or X equals 3 minus root 6, so 1 point something. Both of those numbers satisfy this equation. We don't normally need to write out like that though, I'm just writing out for your benefit, I understand what this means. Usually, this answer here is enough. Or is the best way to write it, I should say. 3 plus or minus root 6. Okay?